Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to make PDF monthly planners in Adobe InDesign that you can sell on Amazon KDP or that you can make for whatever purpose you want. Now, if you don't want to do it in design and you want to download the InDesign documents or even the PDFs, there's a link beneath the video where you can do that. And if you go about a minute to half a minute before the end of the video, you'll see what you can download as I show you examples of both the PDFs and the InDesign documents that are available for download. Okay, so we're going to create a monthly planner on a letter page book. We're going to give it upright orientation and facing pages, and we're going to go for those half inch margins all around the edge of the page. So let's create that and we'll just get the pages palette up in order to do that go window pages and because we're creating a monthly planner and we're going to put a month on each page let's just do the template on the master pages so we can repeat it on the pages throughout the document just going to close that palette now because we don't need it anymore and move that over holding down the space bar to get that hand up so you can move the pages around now let's just create a little text box it's going to be snapping to the edge of the margins if you wanted to turn that off you would go to view grids and guides and uncheck that snap to guides but i always think it's useful to have it snap to guides and snap to the edges it just helps while you're designing things so we'll put uh, january 2020 i'll just get another font and let's go to the selection tool and copy that over by holding down option and then we'll double click to get the type tool up and just click that to align it on the right hand side so that's the easy bit on the rest of the page of course we're going to do the grid for the monthly planner and because it's over two pages and we have a gutter down here we can't have the whole calendar going across the spread so we're gonna to have to create two different tables in order to do that let's do the first one and I'm just gonna create another text frame by dragging over with the type tool and here I'm going to go table insert table and I want eight I believe rows by four columns if you're not sure about it you can always change what we're going to do is this first row here is going to say Monday Tuesday Wednesday etc and then we're gonna have the dates in the other rows let's just move that down to the bottom there and then we'll select all of the rows but the top one and then right click or control click and we're gonna distribute the rows evenly so we get that grid shape first of all let's do this top row here what I'm actually gonna do is make this one black and have the text in white so if you're changing around the colors like that then it's a good idea to get the swatches palette up at the moment we can see the fill of that is none and the stroke is black but what we want to do is make the stroke white and the fill black and it looks like it's white there but that's just because I've selected it if I click in it then we'll see that it's indeed it is black so I'm gonna click off the document and go W and what that does is that just hides all the guides and just gives you a, a better sort of preview of how the designs going to look in here I want white text so as you can see in the swatches palette now that because we have the type tool selected and the cursor blinking within the cell it's showing us that we have actually black text and what we want is white text because we've got it on the black fill and I'm going to put Monday in there it's not a nice font let's change it again maybe make it slightly bigger we don't want to make it too big let's copy that Put it in the other boxes Tuesday oops Wednesday Thursday it's looking a, a bit like there at the bottom of that cell let's make that row a little deeper like that 10 millimeters one more so those days are vertically centered at least and you'll see whilst we've done that if we put the guides back on uh, we've gone over the margin there so 
what we can do is just pull that bottom one up and then we've got to do this again select all of those right click and distribute rows evenly again just so we get them nice and even and then let's just copy that over here holding down option using the move tool and of course this one's now going to be friday saturday sunday and we've run out of days so close the swatch palette and select the whole of that column there and then just again right click and delete column so now we've got it more or less but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put dates in the corners here of all the cells so in order to do that what i'm going to do i don't often do this but i'm going to go into the layers palette and i'm going to make a new layer by clicking on that icon down in the bottom of the layers palette and i'm going to lock that layer so the layer that i've done all the artwork on if i click on the eye icon to make it disappear that's all on layer one so we're going to do a lot of stuff now and we don't want to be clicking and selecting the table below it. So we want to forget about the table for now and just work on a, a layer above in order to make things easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some circles in the top left hand corner and put the dates in. So let's just create a text box. You can see it's in another color. That's because this layer two is in red and that's only the color for the text frames it's not actually a color that's going to be produced on the pdf when we export it of course actually i think i'll make them boxes that'll be better so i'll put the text in there one and we'll again get another font for that and what I want is I want that centered horizontally. Also want it centered in the box. So in order to do that with the move tool selected, you go command B and that gives you the text frame options. And there on this general text frame options, you have the vertical justification and you can put that center. So it's vertically aligned. So you can see that one now is vertically aligned within that box. And so we can see it, let's give the box a background and we'll go back to the swatches palette. And you can see at the moment the text frame or the text box has no fill and no stroke. And we're going to give it a slight fill of 10% black. So if we zoom in there, that's command spacebar, you'll see that the one actually isn't very well vertically centered. So what we'll do is we'll just select that and then in the text palette we go command t that gets the text palette up we can baseline shift it up here it's a bit of a cheat by only one point i think that's going to be enough all right that's good and that means all of our numbers now will be in centered in the box and now we're going to create those numbers on all the pages now to do this i'm going to hold down option and drag and put this somewhere where i think it should be maybe get that a bit wrong but the important thing is to get it right at the end so let's go right up to here and zoom in and make sure this is right where i want it and also let's check to see if i've got this one right as well no that needs to go a little bit holding down shift so they're all correct and then all we have to do is select them all and then get the align palette up and distribute all the objects horizontally i could click that one that one or that one it wouldn't make any difference and that will get them all in the same spot and now we just need to select three of them hold down option and then put them over there while they're all still selected zoom up really closely and just make sure you've got them exactly in the right place and now you've got one line so all you have to do is select that one line group them you'll see why i'm grouping them soon and then just copy them again doesn't matter whether you get them right or wrong, but it does matter if you get it right or wrong on the last cell. So we just make sure that's in the correct place. And same again, we select all of them, only this time we distribute vertically and that will put all of them in the right space. And then all you need to do is with the type tool selected, go in 
and you go one, two, three, four. And you go on like that. Oh, and I have done one row too many, actually. I only needed six rows, so I apologize for that. But that shows you how to create a planner. All you have to do is fill in the right dates. The other thing we have to do, of course, we've done this all on the master page. So if you right click insert pages, m make sure you insert master A and and then you get all these pages to repeat. And that's how you make a monthly planner in InDesign. But if you didn't want to do it yourself, you could just download it. Here is a link underneath the video uh, to a Gumroad page where you can download it for, for 19 bucks. And I'll show you what you'll get for that. So you'll have three year monthly planners from 2021 to 2023 in three different sizes, 8.5 by 11 inch, that's letter size, six by nine inch, a very much smaller sort of paperback book size, like a fiction book that you'd buy in an airport, five by eight inch. And all of those um, go across a spread as well. And they're monthly planners across a spread. But I also have a landscape version all on one page, and this is on a letter size 8 by 5 inch by 11. That's just of 2021. And then, apart from the PDFs, you also obviously have the INDDs, the InDesign documents, and then the IDMLs. They are InDesign documents that can be opened by any version of InDesign CS4 or greater. So that includes any CC version of InDesign, Adobe InDesign CC. So you can open it with virtually any copy of InDesign that you may have on your computer. And I'll show you the InDesign documents now. So here is an example of one of the letter-sized monthly planners that goes from 2021 to 2023. As you can see, it's all on spreads in InDesign. So you could run this off into a PDF yourself. And obviously you could edit. You would need to know what you were doing with InDesign if you wanted to edit these documents. And here is the landscape version where it doesn't have a gutter it's it's not split in two like the other versions that are ready for amazon this one wouldn't be any good for amazon but it would be good for just about anything else so if you wanted to buy that product it's uh, in the link below this video but otherwise i hope that helped my name's rob coven i'll see you in another video